Hi, I'm Terry Wolverton, and we're here at the Golden Bridge Yoga Studio in Hollywood for my gorilla reading. I'm going to read a piece called Nothing and Everything that is from my manuscript Wounded World. It begins with an epigraph from the Rig Veda. There was neither non-existence nor existence then. There was neither the realm of space nor the sky which is beyond. What stirred? Where? One thousand yogis dressed in white sit on a mountaintop under the vast New Mexico sky. Heads draped, we chant the sacred syllables in unison. Satnam, Wahe Guru. Truth is my name, I am in ecstasy. Our reverberations fill the morning. The longer we chant, hour upon hour, the emptier we become, shedding layers of history until we are no longer separate from one another. We become pure instrument, one clear channel for the mantra that pours from our collective throat. Yet this wall of sound is pierced, so easily penetrated by the song of a lone sparrow perched in the rafters who raises its voice in counterpoint. Hearing this, we smile and are emptier still. At the point of zero, shunya, we contain the potential for everything. On this particular morning, I am sitting with the teenagers who are gracious enough about my interloping. They too are clad in white and turbaned, but their reverence is tempered by restlessness, by curiosity, by hormones. The boys struggle with their attention spans, with keeping their man-sized limbs contained, still in a seated posture. One girl periodically thwacks an orange pillow at the boy sitting across from her. On breaks, they scarf corn chips and luna bars. They curl into each other's laps, unselfconscious as kittens. Two white boys attempt to devise a rap about their spiritual practice. The power of zero, the cosmic egg. Empty, one prepares to fill. This meditation is done in pairs, and like many, I have come here alone and must find someone with whom to share the day. My partner, whom I only met this morning, is a line man from Northern California. He climbs telephone poles and cell towers in the shadow of the redwoods. His face is creased with days in the sun. His eyes are clear. Had we not been brought together under this tent to share this practice, we would never have encountered one another. We sit knee to knee in the sea of meditators, our eyes locked during the 62 minutes of chanting. His are blue. Our gaze holds steady. We occasionally smile encouragement and help one another to hold focus. At the end of this session, his face lights up in a smile. He says, hooray, I found a good partner. And I too am grateful for his steadiness and concentration. We don't expect to see one another after this day. From St. Augustine Confessions. It was not absolute nothingness. It was a kind of formlessness without any definition. At lunchtime, I leave the sheltering tent, seek the unforgiving New Mexico summer sun. Although we've been warned of its intensity, I open myself to its rays, invite it to burn clear through to some buried core of me. We are all here to slough unnecessary layers, identities, samsaras, to reach the infinite within. Within zero, there is the power to shatter the framework of logic. In the afternoon, we are led out onto the mountaintop. In lines of 10, we join hands and close our eyes and chant aloud the ancient syllables. Blinded, we walk dusty paths, 
guided only by our group on a stranger's hand we clasp and the sound current rising from our parched throats. Blinded, we are each completely alone and yet utterly inseparable from this organism, these 1,000 white-clad yogis chanting and making our way over unfamiliar terrain. Blinded, we feel ourselves to be nothing and at the same time limitless. Blinded, we do not see the clouds roll in and are surprised to feel the cool baptism of raindrops on our skin. How can emptiness contain so much sensation? Zero is powerful because it is infinity's twin. Today is the day before the last day and each of us will climb into cars or board airplanes to return to our other separate worlds. We will remember some of what we knew here, the bird song, the sun, the splash of rain on unsuspecting skin. We will forget most of it. We will quit our jobs or find new love affairs or embark on a new practice of meditation. These things will mean nothing and everything in the scheme of our lives. We will feel full or we will feel empty and much of the time we will forget that these states are indistinguishable. God is found within the void and the infinite.